Yeah, so the first company uh, was a high-end landscaping company, and that started out of uh, the need for uh, labor. And in our neighborhood, in our city, there was, um, you know, people needed jobs, you know, the students, and people in the neighborhoods needed people to, you know, needed things done, like babysitting, you know, raking, you know, leaves, um, painting things. And I kind of saw both needs and I connected the two. And within about a year, we had about 30 people uh, working for people within our city. And I was charging, you know, $10, $12 an hour uh, to the customer. And I was paying the employees about $8 per hour. And, you know, I made the margin in between connect everybody. Uh, that became really successful. And I merged that into a company that did uh, high end landscaping after that. Uh, so we did a lot of, you know, retaining walls, golf courses, track homes, and I ran that while I was in university and sold that um, again when I was 21. And then it came time I, you know, spent about a year in university and saw a need for our fraternity to send a text message to a lot of people at the same time. And at that point, I dropped out of school. Uh, this was the second time I dropped out of university and raised about three to four hundred thousand dollars to get the idea off the ground and start what is now to tango and to be able to send text messages to my fraternity members uh, now obviously we do everything from politicians to cities to universities businesses uh, big franchises um, really starting from a, a simple need of my fraternity wanting to text message a lot of people at the same time <laughs> You know, I think you have to, you know, figure out what you are passionate about first. Um, and then if you want to step into an entrepreneurial role, you know, first figure out what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about, you know, Beanie Babies, start selling Beanie Babies. You know, don't, don't sell baseball cards because you're never going to like what you do. You know, don't do something for the money. You know, so a lot of my friends that went to university and that graduated, they go into real estate and they hate real estate, but in, they make a hundred grand a year. You know, three, five years doing that, you know, it, it's not going to be a pretty sight. You know, you're going to be like 90% of the United States that just hates their job. Yeah, video, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, you really have to, because again, really anybody in the United States can build a company like Tatango that sends text messages. You know, it's not that complicated, you know, of a service and we're not, re we're not, you know, building rockets here. We're sending text messages. Um, I think what people, they value with our company is they have the relationship with the people behind the company. And be, if we can prove that we're experts, if we can prove that we're fun people and that we know what we're doing, you know, through video, through blog posts, through Twitter and Facebook, you know, we stand out, you know, in comparison to our competitors. <laughs> Yeah, so again, everything I do is calculated in terms of, you know, pictures I post, video I post. So, you know, for that one, there was two things. One, I know funny things, you know, go viral very quickly. Yeah. So, you know, my blog traffic that day spiked, I think, five times, you know, what it oh, normally sure. is. And then uh, the second one is link building. Um, you know, if you put something out there like funny text message, a lot of people are searching for that term. So I know that will drive oh, a lot of traffic to my website, you know, and also it entertains. It shows that, I'm, you know, I'm not just a, a straight business person. I, I do find things funny. So, you know, that's part of who I am. You know, from a business perspective, that comes back to focus on where your customers are. You know, for me, it, it's a no brainer. You know, if everybody's text messaging, and half of those people are Facebooking, first focus on text messaging, then focus on Facebook. Oh, it comes down to like this, we both have learned this. Um, it also comes back to you're not reinventing the wheel. Whatever business you're doing, somebody else has done it before. You know, don't shut yourself off from other people and listen to other people because you can figure out, you know, what things not to do. Because if any entrepreneur that wants to start an internet company, 
you know, comes to me, I'm going to tell them exactly not to go to India, not to outsource it, and they'll be able to save, you know, thousands of dollars and speed up their development if they were just to listen to people that have already done it before. You know, I would say for the personal brand, uh, they spend way too much time um, producing, you know, uh, too much time spent on what, what is behind you. You know, and, and how it looks, and if I have the right camera, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to start video blogging until I get this brand new camera. You know, that's BS. Just start put something out there. It's more about the content than the actual production. Um, so I'd say that's the biggest thing about from a personal standpoint. And then from a business standpoint, you know, I, I think the key is, is is focus, and the key is is try to be the best at one thing first. Now, GE, obviously, they're the best at a ton of different things, but they started out being the best at one thing. Tatango is really the best in the United States at sending a text message to a lot of people really easily. That's what we're good at, and that's all we stick with. You know, uh, back in the day, year two years ago, we tried to be the best at too many things, you know, and, and people didn't know what we were the best at. Everybody on the street, everybody that you talk to, your friends or family, they should easily be able to describe to other people, you know, what your company does the best. And if they can't, you got a problem. Yeah, so I guess I'll just rattle some off. Uh, no order, obviously. Uh, the first one is I had a business partner that was identical to myself. Um, after six months, that completely imploded. Uh, and we bought him out of the company, luckily, but it, it was a huge mess. And the reason it was a mess is because we both had the same skills and we had nobody with skills in engineering. You know, we needed that person, you know, to have, you know, the marketing or sales skills, me with entrepreneur skills, and then maybe the, the engineering skills. You should not have a partner that is, is so similar to you that, you know, it doesn't add anything to the table. Uh, second thing is we didn't focus from day one. We started just building features, whatever anybody would want, we would add to our service. And eventually we had a service that, you know, had no value to anybody. Uh, number three, just like every entrepreneur, we didn't listen enough. And even though I listened a ton, we didn't listen enough. It seems like every time we look back at things, our advisors, our board of directors, they were all, you know, right, you know, correct. So really listen to people that have done it before. Um, Four is, you know, focus on revenue. For the first year or so, we just focused on users. We are you know, looking at that whole Facebook, you know, fact, hey, just get users and the revenue will come. You know, that usually doesn't happen. Uh, and then five, you know, five's a hard one. Because um, we made so many mistakes, I'm trying to figure out what is the biggest mistake we made. You know, I, I think five was growing or planning for growth too fast. So we got an office too fast. Um, we hire people too fast. You know, unless you're in a market that is just exploding, you know, focus on growing slowly and focus on growing with consistency rather than, you know, as fast as possible.